When Jesus talked about the last days, he used a couple of things to refer to. He referred to the days of Lot, and we looked at Lot's wife who turned around and became a pillar of salt uh, not long ago. And then he also said, he said it would be, his coming would be as it was in the days of Lot. But he also said his coming, second coming would be as it were in the days of Noah. And so, obviously, Jesus wants us to consider these famous men of the Old Testament and what their testimony is and, and what the situation was. And so, if you think about it, the days of Noah are much like our own, and that's what Jesus referred to, that in his coming, it would be, they would be eating, they would be drinking, they would be marrying, giving in marriage. Noah's day was very much like our own. It was a time of great spiritual decay, moral degeneration. Uh, evil was called good, and good was called evil. Not like today, amen? Yeah, well, it's just like today. And Noah's time, just like our time, is, was filled with violence. It was filled with corruption across, not just in a local way, it was global, it was worldwide throughout the world. But even in the most terrible of times, here's the good news. Even in the most terrible of times, God has always got a witness. God reserves for himself a man or a woman for every occasion. Think about it. He had Joseph who remained faithful. Can I get a witness? In the days of Pharaoh. He had Elijah who was steadfast in the days of Baal. He had Moses who stood firm in the days of the Exodus. He had Esther. He had Deborah. He had Daniel. And now we see he had no one. God's always got a witness. Are you a witness this morning for the Lord? Noah's one of the most important men in all of history. Catch this. This is really important. Without Noah, there would be no human race today. Do you believe the Bible? Without Noah, you wouldn't be here, neither would I, nor would anything in this world. Every human being would have drowned in the flood if Noah had not listened to God and obeyed God and saved his family. We have holidays celebrating Columbus Day, President's Day, this day, that day. I think we ought to have a Noah's Day. None of those guys did what Noah did. As great as their accomplishments were, they don't even compare to the saving of the world. Only Jesus exceeds that. Billy Graham preached his last crusade in New York City. His last sermon. Guess what it was on? Noah, this very passage. And this is what he said. He made this statement. When the situation in the world becomes like it was in Noah's day, you can look up because you know that Jesus is coming soon. And he's coming. And Jesus himself refers even to Noah's life and to Noah's day. Hebrews chapter 11, this is what I like. Hebrews chapter 11 gives us Noah's entire story in one verse. In one verse. Verse 7 has many things, but we are going to look at six characteristics concerning Noah's faith found in verse 7 of Hebrews chapter 11. Every one of them reveal an important part of Noah's faith. How is your faith? I want you to see first the foundation of faith. Noah's faith, just like ours, the foundation of faith is God. Without faith, it is impossible what? To please God. Faith has a foundation, and that foundation is trust in Almighty God. It's one thing to say you trust him. It's another thing to live out that trust. It's one thing to believe you trust him. It's another thing to experience God in a miraculous way through an extraordinary circumstance. Many of you have walked with God through times that you could not have made it yourself. Can I get an amen? And that's God. 
I don't know how anyone can go through this life and go through what this dear family has went through. To see a, a son, a grandson, a daughter, to experience the bad news that come. Why do we live as if it's never going to happen when we know it can happen to any of us just like that? Noah's faith was sure, and it was his faith that carried him through. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet. Let's just stop right there. The faith of Noah, God's word to Noah, was that a flood was coming, and there had never been a flood before. Noah didn't have any experience to go on. He didn't even know what a flood was. We're going to see in a moment how the water came from the depths of the earth. They had never even seen this. It had never happened before. Can you imagine Noah living in our day? I'm sure the climate scientists would have something to say. But God had told Noah it's going to flood, and Noah believed God. Now, God has declared that Jesus is coming back to this world. Do you believe him? He's coming at a time when we might not be ready unless our eyes are upon him. To all the outside world, it was impossible, they would say, that a worldwide flood could happen. It had never happened before. But it was Noah's faith. By faith, Noah believed the word of the Lord when no one else did. I want to tell you, in this point of civilization, this is a time in civilization when all of civilization was wrong and one man was right. Because the flood came. And Noah believed God. Hebrews 11, verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith doesn't need a backup. Faith doesn't need more information. Noah had God's word, and that's all he needed. And Noah had come to know the Lord, and God knew Noah. And when God said, it's about to flood, Noah listened. Faith is the evidence, the Bible says, of things not seen. It's not based on what I can see or what I can feel. Someone in the room right now is wanting to have a deeper experience with Jesus and what you can see and feel. I want to tell you, Jesus is who he is. And it's by faith we receive him. And that's all because of God's grace. And Noah believed God when it didn't even make sense. Foundation of faith is trusting in God. You know, there was a lot of things my daddy said that didn't make sense at the time. But he was usually right. And I want to tell you, God is always right. God is always right. He's never wrong. Noah's faith is given to us as an example because he believed God. And up to the time of Noah, I want you to look at Genesis chapter 2. See the, see the miraculous thing about this faith is in chapter 2, verse 5, it says, The Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. You got a moisture as you needed it. In Noah's day, rain had never fell from the sky. But God had come in a warning and said, it's about to come, Noah. Noah built the ark for 120 years. Friend, that's faith. It had never rained before. Everybody said, that's crazy. Well, I want to tell you, this world's never seen Jesus Christ come on a cloud and snatch his church off the earth. But you write it down. It's coming soon to a place near you. <laughs> and Noah listened to God. That's what faith is. Believing when I cannot explain it. Believing it just because God said it. And that settles it. That's faith. 
That's real faith. That's genuine faith. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Do you believe that? Someone says, well, how do you know? Well, I believe it because God said it. I've staked my soul and my life on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's never let me down. Just as Noah believed things not seen as yet, God's telling you, God's telling me to believe on Jesus, whom we've not seen as yet, but we know he's real. Because God has told us so. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The foundation of true faith. It's God. I want you to see the motive. I tried to make all these words rhyme, but heck, I got tired. The foundation of Noah's faith, the motive of Noah's faith. Um, I could call this the fear, and that would, that's a, that would fit the foundation and the fear, because fear was the motive. I, 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 I've heard people say, uh, you, you know, talking about fear. Well, that's not the greatest way to come to. I, I, I want to tell you, fear will drive you to God every time. <laughs> I doubt there's anybody that's ever really gotten saved that wasn't scared at some point. You listen to a sermon on hell like we just listened to a week or two ago, and if you're not afraid, you ought to be. Because my faith in God is to trust God, and God says there is a place reserved for those who reject Jesus Christ. And this world doesn't want to hear it. They're just like Noah's day. It's impossible. It's not going it, to... It's all... Listen, I want to tell you the Word of God says it. Jesus himself preached it. So Noah's faith was founded in God, but there was a motive. Look again. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, what? Moved with fear. God's wrath was about to fall, and Noah was very afraid. And we ought to be. When God tells Noah about the coming flood, he was moved with fear, the Bible says. He was moved concerning the wrath of God, and it drove him to seek salvation. It drove him to the very place of God himself. The fear of God does not take you away from God. The fear of God causes your feet to run right to him. And Noah feared the Lord. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. When Noah believed God, he feared him, and they go hand in hand. The fear of God and faith are links in the same chain. They are hooked together. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Not only do I fear the wrath of God upon this earth, I fear more, most the judgment of God for eternity. And I trust the Lord and his word. Judgment will come to those who reject Jesus Christ. There's a second, a, a third thing. Not only do we see the foundation of faith, the fear of faith, I want you to see the fruit of faith. Man, it's coming to me. I got written down the work of faith. Someone give me an amen. amen. See how far it goes. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark. Noah's faith produced an action. Someone said, I got faith. Listen to James 
But wilt thou know, O vain, vain man, that faith without works is dead? James goes through an analogy and says, listen, look at the foolish man who thinks he can show you his faith with dead works, no works at all. Let me show you my genuine faith by what God is doing through me. Genuine faith produces action. There's no doubt about it. We're not having an argument with Paul about by grace are you saved through faith. We're not saved by our works, but saving faith produces good works. Always. And Noah's faith worked because Noah's faith feared. Someone said, you don't know... You don't need to do anything to be saved. You don't have to do nothing to be saved. I want to tell you, that's a life in the pit of hell. You don't have to do nothing to stay lost. You got to come to Jesus to be saved. And this world needs to come to Christ. You got to make a move. You have to make the decision, the choice in your heart. I receive him as my Savior. By faith, Noah prepared an ark when God said there's a flood coming. I want you to catch this. God said build an ark. Go, go get some gopher wood. The redneck preacher said he just, it's not a type of wood. He just told Noah to go for wood. You don't need a lot of it. 120 years, he builds an ark. Build an ark, Noah. Lord, what's an ark? Noah's faith was the foundation, and God built upon that foundation. It moved him with fear, and his faith worked, because genuine faith always is put into action. How was Noah saved? Well, the Statler brothers just sang about it. Noah found grace. In the eyes of the Lord. By grace are you saved. Through faith. Not of works lest any man should boast. Our works don't get us to heaven. But I want to tell you saving faith always worked. Genesis chapter 6 verse 8. You know that's the first time grace is used in the Bible. Grace. Unmerited favor. That God has looked upon you and he's looked upon me and he doesn't see our sin he sent his own son jesus christ to go to the cross and pay our sin debt and dear friend you can stand before the lord you don't have to go through that great white throne judgment you are exempt if you have jesus christ because you've already been declared saved by the blood of christ adrian rogers says grace is the root of salvation and works are the fruit of salvation Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruit. I see the foundation of Noah's faith. I see the motive or the fear of Noah's faith. I see the fruit of Noah's faith. Now I want you to see the scope of Noah's faith. How far did his faith take him? What part of his life did it touch? Was it just his own personal life or did it spread from there? Look at what he says, by faith Noah being warned of of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Someone says, that's all? Noah didn't reach anybody else, I want to tell you. It's not about how many we see saved. It's about being in the will of God and seeing what God will do. Noah's not accountable except to tell everyone what was coming. And he, I, I believe he did. Noah was the first bivocational preacher. We're going to see in a minute. Peter says he was a preacher of righteousness. Noah was a builder. By day, he's building the ark. And by night, he's preaching the word of God. He had a three-word sermon. It's going to rain. Noah never heard about rain. Don't even know what, what is rain. It's going to rain. And you better get ready. Faithful people are not satisfied to be saved alone. They recognize that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever 
believes in him shall be saved. Aren't you glad somebody told you about Christ? Aren't you thankful they didn't keep it to themselves? And that's our job. Faithful people serve the Lord. Faith has action. Genuine faith always has action. But I want you to see something else here. Faithful people never give up on their family. Your witness starts at home. Noah had a tough job. If Noah's children went to public school today, they would tell them God doesn't exist. You evolved from some Cessnic seismic pool of evolution and that everything's a, a, just a, a fictional story. But Noah instructed his children, listen, his day was not much unlike our day. Maybe they didn't go to public school, but Noah taught his children as God had commanded him to teach as a father. And it's very apparent that in that evil world, his family stayed with him. Faithful people never give up on their family. They don't desert them when times get hard. As Dr. Tony Evans says, kingdom men don't leave their wives when something else blinks at them on the other side. Faithful men, men filled with the Lord Jesus Christ. This world needs to get a hold of God and get away from Satan and his influence on the family. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in the house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. In other words, you're talking about them to your kids all the time. And you shall bind them for a sign upon thine hand and there shall be as frontlets between your eyes and you shall write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. God's prescription. For a strong family. The word of God. First of all. Dad you got to love the Lord with all your heart. Hear O Israel. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. With all your soul. With all your mind. Do you love Jesus? With all your heart. That's the first. And then you got to teach that to your kids. Teach the word of God. These two requirements are the foundation for a strong family. And I believe with all of my heart that Noah fulfilled this to the T. He loved God. So I've seen these characteristics of Noah's faith. The next one is his testimony. By faith, Noah, look at back at verse 7. Six characteristics found in one verse. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world. The world wouldn't listen. Noah preached it. And Noah testified it. I, I want to tell you, just the fact that he was out there by day building that ark was a testimony. I want to go see the... Um, scale or the model of that thing where in Kentucky or Tennessee yeah over there some of you have seen it I hear it's huge that had to be a witness it was a testimony to the unbelieving world Peter calls Noah catch this a preacher of righteousness second Peter chapter 2 verse 5 and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Day after day, Noah preached. He pleaded with people to repent and be saved. Noah's preaching, and the ark itself testified to the lost people of that day, just like there are many lost in our world today, there is a testimony of the word of God that this world needs to hear. And Noah was faithful.
faithful to tell it. He was faithful in God's Word. This world handles the Bible as if it's only for the uneducated. Have you noticed that? Smart people don't believe that. That's the way this world acts. And I'm sure it was the same in Noah's day. A Pew Research poll dated April 25th, 2018, it, I quote, finds a direct correlation between higher education and unbelief in God. Now call it what you will. Maybe the colleges are trying to brainwash our kids. Amen or oh my. But if you think you're so smart that you don't need God, God's got something for you. And it's coming soon. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19, the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. As smart as this world can seem, from climate scientists to nuclear physicists, it's foolishness to God if they deny God exists. Not all of them, but most of them today deny God. And they want to be God. You know, that's really the truth of the story. They hate God because they want to be God. They want to have the power of God. They want to have the, um, the control that only God has. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Do you agree with that? Listen to verse uh, 25 of chapter 1. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. God's little... <laughs> if God had a grain of dust under the pinky of his fingernail, it's stronger than anything this world could muster. Catch this from Noah's story. One man built the ark. And he wasn't even a shipbuilder. An amateur built the ark, but a team of so-called professionals built the Titanic. It's unsinkable, they said. And God said, watch this. The foolishness of this world is to say there is no God. And that's what many are saying. The testimony of Noah's faith. We've seen the foundation. We've seen the motive. We've seen the fear. We've seen the scope, how far it went. We've seen the testimony. And now we come to the last one, and it's the reward. And this is the one I built to. Noah was not a perfect man. Jesus did not tell us this story because Noah was perfect and expects us to be perfect. No, we're not perfect, and neither was Noah. Noah was a sinner saved by grace who found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Simple as that. The righteousness of Christ was imputed to him because he believed God. God counted it to him as righteousness. The ark was an Old Testament picture of Christ. Have you noticed that? Just as Noah had to trust the ark, can you imagine, never seen a flood, never seen it rain, it begins to thunder, the lightning starts flashing, the whole world starts falling apart, and Noah had to absolutely trust the ark that he built, but he did it the way God had instructed him. He had to place all of his trust in that ark. And when God said, go in, he had to go in. Amen? Amen? That ark is a picture of Jesus Christ. You have to place all of your trust in him and him alone. The ark is a portrait of Christ. Just as Noah went into the ark, you and I must come into Christ. We all must come to Christ. Do you believe on Jesus Christ? Have you placed your trust in him like Noah placed his in the ark? If any man will come to Christ, they may come. 
the age of grace is still open. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And dear friend, until God is finished, the age of grace is still available to any who will come. The door of that ark was open. Two by two, the animals came. Noah went when God told him to go. Anyone who wanted to go could have went. Can I get an amen? Amen. And the door of grace is still open today, but you must come in while the door is open because one day God's going to close the door. Noah's story. As they went into the ark, who shut the door? God did. And God's going to shut the door of grace. And when it's closed, it's closed. There was only one door, and after that door was shut, all hope was gone. I can see that world as the lightning began to come, as the flood waters rose, as the thunder began and it rolled and all the waters were coming up. I can see the people pounding on the door. It's too late. God has given us the warning. And Noah believed God. And it was credited unto him as righteousness. And Noah and his family were preserved. Are you safe and secure in the arms of Jesus Christ today? I don't know when the door is going to close. All I know is the door is open. And just as God speaks to his people, as Brother Ken shared with you, God has spoken to all of us. The door is open, and you need to tell everybody. Because one day it's going to close. Let's all stand as the musicians come forward. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you, church, for all your prayers. Tanya and I, Tanya's in the sound room. I praise God for that. And he's keeping us. And God is taking care of us, and he's using you to do it. And I thank you for it. Brother Stephen, thank you for the sermon. Enjoyed looking at it today. Next time you send me a song, try not to let it stick in my head all week long. No, that's okay. Works good. Do you know Jesus Christ? Go ahead. Have you trusted in him? Have you placed your trust in him? Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I Every head bowed, every eye closed. You know, Billy Graham was one of my heroes of the faith. I grew up watching those crusades, and there came a time when God called him home. And perhaps he'll call us home before the rapture of the church, but none of us knows. Maybe the rapture happens, and we all go at the same time, those of us who know Christ. My fear is many are playing a game with God. (laughs) Their faith is not genuine. Never has been. It's just to impress somebody. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you, the only person you need to be concerned with is the Lord himself. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that he will say to the many that are on his left instead of his right, depart from me, I never knew you. And he said there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, that's right. Dear friend, I want to tell you, the door's open. Yeah. Come to Christ while you still can. In Jesus' name. One more line and then we'll close. Just as I am in waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of 
God, I come, I come. Bless you, Mary. Sue comes forward and says, Brother Rod, I thank God for my salvation, the assurance I know that I'm going to heaven to Amen. be with him one day. Praise God bless you. Amen. Amen. Woo. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's wonderful. God bless you and keep you. I got something for you to sit down. Marsha Pollard. Standing right over here, says, I've been coming to this church. I love this church. I want to be a member of this church. Hallelujah. I'm saved. I know Jesus Christ. I was baptized. Will you people accept me as part of Co First Baptist Church? Woo yeah. There she is right there. Yeah. Praise God. All those in favor said? Amen. Yeah. And if anyone's opposed, we'll deal with you. <laughs> yeah. That's right. God bless you, Marcia. Welcome to, to our church. And Brother Terry Scott, close us, please, in prayer.